Hey everyone, today we're going to take a quick look at lighting in games. This is a topic that always mystified me at first, since light and shadow feel so intuitive, yet making art or doing physics with light can be so frustratingly difficult. Today we're going to talk about a few basic topics, color, intensity, placement, as well as the math behind light in 3D graphics. I'm definitely not an expert in this topic, but hopefully you'll leave this with a better understanding of questions and ideas a developer tackles when considering lighting in their games. So let's get started. There are many ways to represent color with numbers, but RGB or red, green, blue is the simplest to understand. You assign a number from 0 to 255 to red, green, and blue to make colors. So 255, 255, 255 is white, 000, 000 is black, 255, 000, 000 is red, and then you have a mix of everything in between. So we can see that white light is a mixture of all visible colors. If we shine white light on a red ball, the ball absorbs red light and reflects all the other colors. This is one of the most basic rules of optics. So if we shine green or blue light on the red ball, it doesn't absorb any of the light because there's no red to absorb. So it reflects all of it, making it appear black. However, just as the sun isn't perfectly white light, objects are usually not perfectly red or blue. This is important to think about in games since tinting light can completely change the atmosphere of an environment, but you have to consider how the objects in your level will reflect that light. For example, you may want to add a red tint to sunlight in a desert environment or a blue tint in a cold environment to emphasize that atmosphere. Next, you have to consider the intensity and filtering of your light. In other words, let's say you're making a game where the sun is your primary light source. Is it quietly illuminating the world below, or is it a blinding, fiery angel comet? It can depend whether you should have dramatic or realistic light, but you have to ensure that there isn't too much or too little. Otherwise, that can interfere with the player's experience. Besides sunlight, you could have indoor lighting, candles, flashlights, and so on, but they also need to have some level of realism, even in a stylistic game. For example, three light bulbs should not uniformly illuminate a room. There should be a gradual dimming as the light radiates outward. Some of our most beloved titles use light as a blurry, squinting crutch. The concept is very similar to how Instagram filters appear to fix poor lighting or give you clearer skin when they're really obscuring and blurring the details. The light should enhance the game's art and be chosen with reason. It shouldn't be a crutch or an afterthought. For example, the recent announcement of Twilight Princess HD was pretty underwhelming for me when I first saw the trailer. The game didn't have the instant wow factor that Wind Waker HD had on reveal. But when I looked at comparison videos, the original game was oozing with blurriness and filters, which masked some of the harsher textures and polygons. The new version definitely makes use of the better hardware by using more color and sharper textures. The bloom and filtering of the old version is still present, but it looks much more appropriate and atmospheric rather than feeling like a cover-up. On the other hand, when Wind Waker HD was first revealed, it appeared vastly improved with bright color and crisp shading, which I think were some of the key wow factors that weren't easily seen in Twilight Princess's darker atmosphere. Which goes to the next topic, which is placement. How do we achieve the atmosphere we want for a level with our lighting? Game designer Scott Rogers described making video games as being similar to designing a theme park attraction. You have to use light to draw the player's eyes to key areas of the level without giving away too many puzzle elements or giving the player explicit instructions. In an amusement park ride or a fun house, there is no HUD or mini map or arrow telling you what to look at. And similarly, I think well-designed games rarely use these tools to get players' attention. For example, in the first five minutes of Bioshock Infinite, you enter a lighthouse. 
At this point, you know very little about why you're there or what the story is, and so the game uses carefully placed spotlights to communicate atmosphere and plot details. Specifically, it highlights biblical verses, a map of the U.S., and a gruesome corpse with a sign saying, don't disappoint us. While that may be unrealistic to have such convenient spotlights, the game is not aiming to be realistic. It's aiming to create an experience. If those objects were not highlighted, the player could have easily run past them, not knowing which elements or themes of the environment are actually important to the game. But in short, I think games are best with as few checklists and flashing arrows as possible, and well-placed lighting can be a much more clever way to help players navigate. So that was a very simplistic, high-level overview of some topics and questions in design. But what about the math behind it? In physics and the real world, light is a wonderful and complex phenomena. It's a stream of photons, which are particles, but it's also composed of electromagnetic waves. Current games don't view light like this. Engines do not treat light as having particles and waves. They just focus on how it appears on objects. For example, Lambertian lighting is a simple equation that calculates the intensity of the light reflected by an object. Applying it to a point light source and a sphere will give you a picture like this. The equation is the color times the intensity of the light source times the direction of the light source multiplied by the normal vector of an object and the cosine of the angle between them, where the normal vector is an arrow that points perpendicular or straight out of a surface. So a sphere would be made of many triangles with many normal vectors, for example, and we would apply this equation to each of those triangles to figure out how much or little light they should reflect. Another simple equation is the Fong reflection, which gives a little highlight that you might see on shiny objects. This equation is the direction the light reflects off the surface times the direction you are viewing the object, multiplied by the cosine of those angles to the nth power, where n can be many different numbers that a programmer might choose to change the smoothness of the highlight. Currently, a lot of the most graphically impressive games owe their wow factor impressions to more advanced lighting. To me, having accurate shadow in Wind Waker HD really showed its departure from the GameCube, and I think the hyper-realistic Order 1886 looked so amazing because of the impressive attention to lighting. And I'll just say, despite the low review scores, that game had some pretty awesome technical achievements that went totally underappreciated. But anyway, there's a quick video on lighting in games. Let me know of other topics you'd like to see, and check out some of the other videos on my channel. Also, if you'd like, I'm back to uploading daily gameplay videos on my second channel, along with some lore and story speculation. I have a lot of content planned, so stay tuned in the next few weeks, and have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!